In this lecture, we will talk about inverse function of cosine x, which is denoted by arc cosine x. Let's first look at the graph of cosine x. We know from negative pi to the positive pi is one period of cosine x. Huh. When x equals 0, we have a value for y cosine x is 1, huh, right here. Okay, So cosine x starts from 1, goes to 0, at pi equals 2, and then negative 1, when x equals pi. Huh. Apparently, Cosine x is not a one-to-one -one function, you see. When you draw a horizontal line, it has more than y intersections. Okay. When x equals negative pi over 6, we have a y is 1 half. When x equals positive 2 pi over 6, we have a y is also 1 half. If you look at this chart, then you know 2 pi over 6 will correspond to 1 half. And so is the case for negative 2 pi over 6 correspond to 1 half. So those two different elements correspond to the same element 1 half. And then this is not one to one. One to one requires different elements in X has different element in Y corresponding to the previous set in X. Uh, algebraically, if you see the second coordinate are the same, the first coordinates are different then you know this relationship will not be a one-to-one. -one. Huh. So you can look at if a function is a one-to-one -one in three different ways. Okay. Now, since this is not one-to-one, -one, it may not have the inverse function. But if we restrict the domain of cosine x from 0 to pi, then the function will have the inverse function. You see, I let it flash in. When x from 0 to pi, this black part, it has at most one intersection with the horizontal line. So it will pass the horizontal line test. The function will be one to one. Okay, basically this point will be removed. Okay. All the blue curve to the left from zero and the old blue curve from pi to infinity will be removed. Okay, so let's remove that by clicking cosine. Okay, so domain is 0 to pi. Range still from negative 1 to positive 1. You see the smallest is negative 1. The biggest is 1. So range, domain are restricted. Okay, then from this picture, we want to remove negative 2 pi over 6. Okay, then function will become one to one. So let's click this part, remove this pair, and this dotted line. Huh. Okay, now the function it says is one to one. Okay, why do we want to make it one to one? Is because you know we have a cosine two pi over six which is 1 half, huh. 2 pi over 6, which is 1 half. We want this element can go back 
to find an element. So we want to denote that by inverse function. Cosine inverse 1 half is 2 pi over 6. So we want this element to be able to go back. If we have a two elements like negative 2 pi over 6 here, then we are not able to go back because their two corresponds to 1 half. That's the purpose. Okay? We want uh, any element in set in this set be able to go back. So we need to study the inverse function. That's the purpose. Okay? So when you are given 1 half, make sure you will give me 2 pi over 6. 2 pi over 6. Not negative 2 pi over 6. Huh? Not this value. Okay? It's removed. All right? Do not give me this value. Give me 2 pi over 6, or you reduce that to pi over 3. That's the purpose. Huh? Again, 2 pi over 6, 1 half. Then when you go back, 1 half goes first, 2 pi over 6 goes secondly. Okay, so that's basically the purpose. When you draw cosine x, you draw in this way, but when you draw the inverse function, 1 half, 2 pi over 6, you will draw 1 half first and 2 pi over 6 secondly. Previously was 2 pi over 6, 1 half, which is this point. And now you draw will be 1 half, 2 pi over 6. Where is 1 half? It's roughly here. Okay, it's roughly here. Where is 2 pi over 6? Uh, let me get it out. So you see, when x is 1 half, here, well, y is 2 pi over 6. Okay, basically, you know, those two points you switched. Previously was 2 pi over 6 for that, and 1 half for this point. Now you draw is 1 half goes first because that's x coordinate, and then y will be 2 pi over 6. Okay, so we have studied one pair. Okay, and the rest of them are actually the same. If you look at this one, pi over 6, radical 3 over 2, that's the point right here for cosine. Okay, but when you draw the inverse function, you want to draw red one, radical 3 over 2 first, which is right here, and then pi over 6 because that's the value for y, so it should point here, okay? Those two points are symmetric with respect to what? This dotted line, okay? This dotted line, all right. So actually, the uh, restricted cosine x like that, and then inverse cosine function goes in this way. Okay, they are symmetric, those two curves, with respect to y equals x. Huh. So let me eliminate that. All right. So this cosine inverse 1 half equals 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3. This cosine inverse is also can be written as arc cosine x, okay? Arc cosine one half is actually two pi over six, okay? Now again, since here is reversed, and then the domain for arc cosine x will be from negative one to positive one, which is opposite range for cosine, it was from active 1 to positive 1. Now, for the arc cosine, it is switched, okay? Switched from active 1 to positive 1. That's the domain now. Range 
is from 0 to pi, OK? Because they are switched x and y, all right? So then when you talk about arc cosine, make sure 0 pi is from here to here. The output is from 0 to pi. It means what? You will not get negative angle. Uh, 0 to pi over 2 in the, in the first quadrant, and pi over 2 to the pi is in the second quadrant. OK. When you have a positive value, the angle output is from 0 to pi over 2 is in the first quadrant. And then when you have a negative value, the output, the angle, should be from pi over 2 to the pi, which is in the second quadrant. All right? You see negative 1 half corresponds to 4 pi over 6. This angle is in the second quadrant. OK? 4 pi over 6 is 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3, uh, which is 120 degrees. OK? 2 pi is uh, 2 pi is 360, okay, divided by 3, which is 120, 120 degrees here. That's in the second quadrant. Okay, so make sure your output is from 0 to 180 degrees, especially for negative values. Negative 1 half gives 120 degrees. Ah, so it's the case right here because of the symmetry. Okay, you see right here. Huh. So when we talk about arc cosine, make sure it's in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. No negative angles. Okay, arc sine is different. That's in the fourth quadrant and the first quadrant. Okay, you got to review that. All right. Now, we may see more result right here. If you click this one, you see this is what we did. Uh, I did one more time here. Okay, the same. Uh, cosine inverse is 1 half. Uh, cosine inverse 1 half is 2 pi over 6. And also, you know, arc cosine, don't be surprised, is just cosine inverse. Another way to write uh, cosine inverse. So arc cosine is just cosine inverse. Negative 1 is pi. Why? You see right here, negative 1 is pi. OK? So don't, when you look at arc cosine negative 1, don't give me a negative value here. Right? Yeah, it's basically, you know, it's because cosine pi is negative 1. So cosine inverse negative 1 is pi. They switched. All right? So when you get confused, play with these electronic notes. Very useful. Ah. So I have uh, created this for many days to let you get it in less than 15 minutes. Huh. What are those stands for? You see, cosine negative, cosine inverse 1 half is 2 pi over 6. It basically says 1 half goes 2 pi over 6 by taking the vehicle cosine inverse. And then the red vehicle, red vehicle means it goes back again. Huh? You first initially go from 1 half back here and then the red vehicle cosine takes it back. So still is one half. All right? Yeah. So then you get is what? You get cosine, cosine inverse one half is one half. Huh. If you do not look at this part, you will see that's a pretty critical uh, identity. So this one half actually works for every x, imagine. Starting from here, go back here, then go back one more time. Uh, 
cosine inverse is the vehicle from right to left, and the red vehicle is originally cosine x, send it back. Or you may write cosine inverse as arc cosine x. Then cosine arc cosine x is just x. This is a great identity. Huh? I'm glad you can go this far. Please review this lecture. I'll see you next time.